Greetings and salutations, my friend. Well, as the title of the video suggests, I'm going to talk about the three main areas of philosophy that I think are most interesting and relevant today for today's modern society. And a lot of the time when people think of philosophy, where the first thing might, might come to mind someone who's not that well versed in this really really wide subject is gr ancient Greek philosophers, right? Long beard, all of that. But, ha but you might be asking yourself, well, how relevant is exactly philosophy in today's day and age? Well, probably not that much if you, you know, if you consider things like answering questions such as Do you think it is possible to acquire knowledge? Are actions right or wrong based on their consequences, intentions or actions themselves? What is the meaning of life? And the truth is that if you focus only on those age-old questions they might not be as relevant to the times we are living in. So. What is the place of philosophy in today's society? Is there even a space for philosophy? Is there a need for philosophy? And my answer is absolutely yes. But I think that we are moving into a whole new area of philosophy. But more on that later. If you're new to philosophy, I think this could be a good way for you to realize that philosophy is much more than what I just presented. And if you have an interest in philosophy, or perhaps you're considering studying philosophy and wondering, is it worth studying philosophy? How, what can I, will I use it for? Is there a use for philosophy? And yes, there, there absolutely is. But if you come into the world of philosophy with a clear idea of what you want to do, your chances of um, succeeding are much higher than someone who just oh you know I want to study philosophy because I think it's interesting. So here's three areas of philosophy that I think are very very relevant today. So number one is bioethics and it's an increasingly more relevant subject. What can bioethics be applied to? Well Everything from medicine to uh, gene technology, bioengineering, to moral questions of abortion or euthanasia. Really, there are so many things you can apply bioethics to, and even things like should transgender kids receive puberty blockers. A lot of the time, when we talk about bioethics, or when there are debates surrounding bioethics, a lot of the time we think we are discussing politics, right? And well, it's not that strange, after all, politics are really, it's just a branch of philosophy, right? But we assume a lot of the time that we are discussing or debating something political, when in reality what we are discussing is actually an ethical issue rather than a political one. So bioethics today get reduced to politics a lot of the time, but they are a subject in and of itself. And bioethics should be of interest not only to philosophers, but also doctors and anyone who's working with gene technology or bioengineering, biotechnology and all of that. It's a super, super interesting subject and it's probably the best way to apply ethics in today's society. It's useful, it applies to something that is actually going on rather than exploring more abstract thoughts. Although we tend to do that a lot of the time as well. Now, number two is philosophy of physics. Uh, let me tell you, especially astrophysics, it's a field of study where most discoveries are being made right now. We are living in the golden age of astrophysics. A lot of physicists I talk to say that, you know, we don't need philosophy today, just like we don't need alchemy because there's chemistry now, right? But that couldn't be further from the truth, really. The truth is, 
physics and philosophy need each other. I think that a good philosopher uh, should also be a physicist and I think that a good physicist should also be a philosopher. I think that the best way to get to know the natural world around us is not purely through calculations and it is not purely through philosophical examination. You need two of them really. And as much as we like to think that physics provide an absolute answer, the unquestionable truth that is not exactly the case all the time, let's consider um, quantum physics and the theory of relativity. They seem to be contradictory or how physicists don't necessarily agree on what is the cause of the expanding universe. There's still a need of for philosophy when we don't have the uh, absolute answers. And can there actually be absolute answers? Do things follow one principle precisely in the physical sphere of this universe? Or as things rise in complexity, more than one principle apply? Do things develop in a deterministic manner? Or as things rise in complexity, is there a decline in determinism? Those are some really interesting questions. This and questions concerning entropy can be really interesting to philosophers of physics. So I would definitely uh, recommend getting into the field of philosophy of physics if philosophy is something you're interested in and on, on top of that if you're into physics and astronomy and all of that stuff it's just a perfect way to combine these two disciplines and what is so beautiful about philosophy is that it's not exclusively a natural science and it is not exclusively a social science either. It's somewhere in between it transcends this line that's why i absolutely love philosophy and now number three and this is my my personal area of interest and that is uh, philosophy of technology now philosophy of technology much like bioethics super super relevant we are living in a time where technological advancement and progress and innovation is so integral to our existence and to our society. Um, we've seen more of that than ever before and I think this actually gives philosophy a new origin of sort, a new birth of the age, a golden age of philosophy which uh, we haven't acknowledged yet but it is happening. Much like the Greeks, you lived in a golden age of philosophy because it was so needed in the world of that time for us to understand the natural world around us and, and humans as well. And as technology develops, we are entering into a new world, sort of. And we need to provide a philosophical analysis of new technologies that are developing and not just in ethical terms but in metaphysical and ontological and teleological terms as well. The way I see it, more companies working with technology and technological innovation should be hiring philosophers because so far we have this idea that the place of philosopher is uh, at a university, at the academy, being a professor and all of that and I think that more philosophers should be working in the field of technology, working at those private companies. I think that um, it is needed first of all for the ethical guidelines of technological uh, evolution and uh, technological usage of new innovative devices and all of that. Besides, you can always combine the philosophy of technology with bioethics. There's no wall there dividing these two disciplines necessarily. Or you can go my way and um, combine all three elements in your work, really. I hope that this video made you realize that philosophy is more relevant today than you probably thought. And if you are considering studying philosophy, if that is something you are interested in, um, focus on either one of those three areas or combine them in any meaningful way you would like.
It's good to know the basics. It's good to know the philosophical heritage left behind, just like, like I think it's important to know the historical heritage in general, but we need to keep moving forward and we can use philosophy to achieve those means. And with that, I bid you farewell and uh, have a good day. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.